Welcome, my name is Dr. Cynthia Miller, and today we will be discussing test-taking strategies for multiple choice questions. In high-level science courses, you will be administered multiple choice tests that are extremely challenging. Students often ask me for tips on how to approach these questions, so today we will be discussing some strategies that may improve your ability to perform well multiple choice exams. We will be using actual questions from exams given at the University of Louisville in the schools of dentistry and medicine and discussing 10 tips that will enable you to perform well. So when the exam starts, your adrenal medulla will be releasing epinephrine and your body will be entering into a fight or flight response. Take some deep breaths. Most mistakes made during the test are simply due to rushing. For tip number one, I want you to treat each question as a puzzle. You should be aware that as you approach high level science courses, multiple choice exams will no longer be simple identification responses that you can quickly answer. Let's look at what I mean. Here is a typical undergraduate low level question. You can look at the question and immediately answer if you have read the material. Upper level courses will be different. You must work through the question to obtain the right answer. So be prepared for this fact and most importantly, don't panic. This leads us to tip number two. Take the time to outline each question. On my exams, you can always use colored pens, markers, or highlighters, but be sure to inquire with your individual professor first. What are the most important words that you should be paying attention to? If a negative term such as none, not, or never is used, be sure to circle or highlight that portion. Your test or scrap paper should have lots of writing on it by the end. Take the time to carefully draw out any figures or flowcharts that could help you. And while this may seem like you're wasting time, this methodical approach often saves time once you establish a rhythm to your test taking. When outlining for tip number three, you should treat each response individually. So when you're answering the question, treat each response as an individual true or false statement. Even if you think you found the first correct response, keep going. As you read through the subsequent responses, you may find a better answer. If a question is written well, there should be two responses that both seem plausible. The questions are typically peer reviewed to ensure that there is, however, one best answer. Sometimes it helps to reread the stem before each response. If you see a portion of the response that is incorrect, take the time to write in the correct words or write in a quick reasoning at the end of the statement. If you use this strategy when solving practice problems, you'll start to experience the process that professors undergo when writing exam questions. There are a limited number of ways to test the same concept, so it's very common for us to ask the same question in a slightly different way. For tip number four, be aware that there aren't that many unconditionally true statements in science. So if the statement has the words all, always, never, or only, these absolutes mean that the fact is undisputed. In most cases, the professor would have indicated these facts in class. As an example, the sodium potassium pump is a ubiquitous transporter in the plasma membrane that is always running unless specific drugs are given. I'll mention this several times in class. So if you stall a statement like this on my exam, you would be comfortable with the term always. If an absolute statement wasn't mentioned as an undisputed fact by the professor, you should proceed with caution. Tip number five, true statements aren't always true answers. If any part of the response is false, then the entire statement is false. But just because a response is true, it may not necessarily be the correct answer. That's confusing, I know, so let's look at an example. This is a question asking for a situation that would lead to systemic edema. Without looking at the stem, students might be tempted to select response D because they know that hypotension would lead to a decrease in the blood hydrostatic pressure. So response D by itself is a true statement. However, if we look back at the stem, this drop in blood hydrostatic pressure would not cause the patient systemic edema. So this is an incorrect response. Always go back to the stem to make sure your response makes sense. For tip number six, eliminate twin responses. If two of the answer choices are essentially the same, you should be able to eliminate both of them. 
In this question, colloid osmotic pressure and onchotic pressure are analogous terms. So both responses C and D can be eliminated. Keep in mind that this tip will not work if your professor utilizes two of the above or all of the above answer choices. We try to avoid the use of these questions in dental physiology as they are not allowed on the national board examinations. Tip number seven, one of these things is not like the other, but still isn't the correct answer. If there are partner choices, students will often assume that one of the statements must be the correct answer. So in this question, students might be tempted to select responses A or B because they are opposites. However, the situation described does not have a substantial effect on extracellular osmolality, so these are both incorrect responses. You should be aware that two opposite statements could both be false. Tip number eight, avoid the traps. There are some test taking strategies that professors are aware students utilize to make better guesses on exams. However, I want to assure you that many professors are aware of these misconceptions and may manipulate the strategy to truly test student knowledge. For example, one common trap is that the longest statement is the correct answer. This will definitely not always be the case in upper level science courses. Another common strategy is to guess that the answer is choice C. Most professors use computer programs that will randomly scramble responses, so this is not a good test taking strategy. But what about tip number nine, when you just don't know? Mark questions that are unclear for you to return to if time allows. Go ahead and bubble in your best guess in case you run out of time. When you revisit the question, try not to change your answer unless you misread the question or have remembered new information during the course of the exam. I also discourage students from tabulating how many guesses they have made during the exam. This will only act to increase your stress level. And last but not least, tip number 10, the final stretch. Please do not wait until the last minute to bubble in your answers. This is a recipe for disaster. It makes me nervous as a course director when I have to call time and see a student scrambling. You will typically be given a warning at the end of the exam as the allotted time limit is approaching. Before turning in your answer sheet, please make sure that all answers are bubbled in correctly. On just one test in my dental physiology course, there were five students who lost credit simply from bubbling in double answers on the same question or neglecting to bubble in an answer at all. I encourage students to use these same strategies when solving practice problems. You can even develop time limits on practice problems to closely mimic test taking situations. If you establish this rhythm while studying, it will help to reduce anxiety during the test when it counts the most. I want to wish you all the best of luck on your upcoming examinations.